Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over Tropical Storm Henry, which very soon will probably become a hurricane. We're going to be focusing on Henry and also talking about uh, the systems around Henry, which is allowing it to move up into New England. Uh, overnight, the model guidance has shifted a little bit further uh, to the west, but I think it's probably going to stay fairly close to where it is right now. We're expecting a landfall somewhere uh, over Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, or southern Massachusetts. So fairly small region where uh, this is expected to uh, make landfall. We're going to be timing this out for you guys and giving you all the details on what you need to know for the storm. So starting off with the National Weather Service page, you can see that we have some air quality alerts in effect for the west as well as some flood watches in a little bit of Idaho and Washington. We have some dense fog advisories in effect for the Ohio Valley and parts of the Great Lakes, as well as some heat advisories in Oklahoma, Kansas, and also a little bit of, uh, of uh, Louisiana and Mississippi. We also have some flood watches in effect for the Mid-Atlantic, and then with the uh, with the hurricane watches, the hurricane warnings, tropical storm warnings, we're going to talk about that and kind of break down where uh, the hurricane warnings are, where the tropical storm warnings are in just one moment. Yesterday, we had a high temperature of 107 degrees in Falcon Lake, Texas, low temperature of 25 degrees in Bridgeport, California, uh, highest rainfall report was in Hartsville, New York, where they got 6.25 inches of rain, and there were no snowfall reports as of yesterday. Yesterday. So here's a zoomed in look at what uh, the actual watches and warnings are. We have hurricane warnings which are up for this entire region uh, right here. So we have hurricane warnings up for that uh, for that area. We have tropical storm watches up for this area of western Long Island and even into a little bit of Kent uh, Connecticut. And then we have some storm surge watches which are up for the entire coastal area uh, of Long Island into a uh, little bit of southern upstate New York, southern Connecticut, southern Rhode Island, and southeastern Massachusetts. And then I believe we also have more hurricane warnings uh, under this area right here. We have hurricane warnings also up for these areas here. And then we have uh, tropical storm watches uh, a tropical storm warnings up uh, for these regions right here. Uh, so we do have a fairly uh, a fairly filled up map here in terms of all the watches and warnings. If we look at the current National Hurricane Center page, you can see that we have three storms. Uh, they took off X Tropical Storm Fred, but uh, it's currently right up here. So we technically have four, uh, but on the Hurricane Center page, we're only tracking three. We have Hurricane Grace, which is all the way in the lower Gulf of Mexico. We have Disturbance Warning. One, which may may turn into another uh, tropical storm. Looks like it'll be out to sea, but it has a 20% chance of developing within the next five days. And then we have Tropical Storm Henry, uh, which is going to be the main focus of today's video, and that's sitting just offshore of the Carolinas. So if we take a look at Tropical Storm Henry, uh, you can see it's located at 30 degrees north by 73.7 .7 degrees west, maximum winds of 65 miles per hour, minimum pressure of about 995 millibars, moving west-northwest at 9 miles per hour. So if we look at the key messages, and I'll read them out for you guys, the first one says Henry is forecast to be near the northeast coast of the U.S. on Sunday and Monday, and the risk of storm surge, wind, and rain impacts in portions of southern New England and eastern Long Island are increasing. Hurricane and storm surge watches are now in effect for portions of Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and southeastern Massachusetts. Additional watches or warnings may be required later today. I'm uploading, well, I'm recording this video right now. It's around 8.30. Uh, a.m. Eastern Time, uh, so that by the time it's uploaded, it should be around 9 or 9.30 a.m., right around then. Uh, so this is when all that information is valid for. So they may add more watches or warnings in the time from when I upload this to when you're watching this. You're going to have to check the National Hurricane Center page at hurricanes.gov, or uh, you can go to the National Weather Service page as well to see the new watches or warnings. Looking at the second message, it says swells from Henry uh, will begin to reach much of the east coast of the U.S. and Atlantic Canada by the end of the week and continue through the weekend. These swells could cause life-threatening surf and rip currents, uh, so that's also a big issue. If you live anywhere from, I would say, the Del Marva all the way up to uh, New England, uh, that's where you don't want to be going in the waters this weekend, at least for, uh, at least until, I would say, 
probably Monday night into Tuesday is when you could probably start going back into the waters just because it should be a little bit better. But with that tropical storm or hurricane by that point moving into those areas, of course, we still have issues in the waters and rip currents will definitely be a big issue uh, over this weekend. The third message says heavy rainfall may lead to flash urban and small stream flooding over portions of southern New England into Monday. So looking at the watches and warnings, you can see that area where they have those hurricane watches up and you can see that's for a larger area. And then we have a small area just in western Long Island and a little bit of uh, Connecticut and upstate New York uh, or the lower Hudson Valley, I would say, uh, where they have tropical storm watches in effect. You can see the uh, width of that tropical storm force winds. Uh, and you can see it's actually a fairly big area and that is only going to grow and we're actually expecting this to become a hurricane. It's been weakening a little bit, uh, but that is mainly because it's going into an area of a little bit of shear. As it moves to the north, just offshore of the Carolinas, and as it continues to move to the northeast, uh, that's when it's going to really start to strengthen. Uh, once it goes into the cooler waters right here, uh, it may weaken once again, uh, but by that point, uh, it will already be strong enough that it should be able to hold out for at least a little bit. Looking at the current cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center, you can see that it's expected to become a hurricane by Saturday uh, evening. Then it should sustain hurricane strength, which is a new development. We were not expecting this to stay as a hurricane all the way until landfall. But at this point, it does look like all the way through Sunday afternoon, it could stay as hurricane level uh, and make landfall somewhere between central Long Island all the way to about Cape Cod. That's the uh, current area where we're focusing on this. So it should move up to the north, then it's going to do a bit of a loop, uh, and then it should come back out uh, into the areas of Atlantic Canada, uh, into the Gulf of Maine. So it should be moving out after that. It should do a little bit of a loop and then move out. It should be quite weak by that point, so it would be a tropical depression by the time it's impacting Nova Scotia. If we look at the model guidance, uh, you can see that the majority of these models have this, again, making landfall around Sunday night uh, into Monday morning. Uh, the mo the mo most of these models here have it making landfall somewhere between, again, central Long Island and uh, in between Cape Cod. We have a few outlier models that are going uh, to the east or even one a random model that's going out uh, to the west. But again, the majority of these models are within that cone, uh, showing that it's probably going to be somewhere uh, within that area area right here you can see then see that they do a sharp turn to the northeast and then they move into Atlantic Canada so that's the general track as of now if we're looking at the chances and uh, the chances of tropical storm force winds as well as when it's most likely uh, to start off with the tropical storm force winds you can see that by Sunday morning you're going to start to see the winds pick up then by uh, sad, uh, by Sunday evening uh, or into the uh, afternoon hours is when it's going to start to make landfall and that's when the peak of the winds should be over many of these areas in southern New England and over parts of uh, Long Island as well so those are going to be the areas we're dealing with the bulk of the uh, strongest winds. We're dealing with uh, winds with the 50 to even 90% chance of being at tropical storm force. And we even have a quite high chance of some of these areas being up near hurricane force. That's why we have those hurricane watches and warnings up for those areas. Then you get up into areas like northern New England, especially for the coastal areas. And we do have some shot of getting some tropical storm force winds. Not a high one, but we do have a chance uh, over those areas uh, and if you were to get tropical storm force winds or at least gusty winds it would probably come between Sunday evening uh, and into Monday afternoon because the storm should start to stall out a little bit so it will take a little bit longer uh, for the storm to move out. If we look at the intensity guidance, you can see that right now it's in a middle or even upper level state uh, of being a tropical storm. And it's expected to become a hurricane by most models. I would say probably 70% of the models have this becoming a hurricane within some point of its lifetime, probably closer to 80% of the models. So fairly good shot that this becomes a low to even mid-level category one. Uh, and then it should weaken down uh, into a tropical storm upon uh, entering the core cooler shelf waters and then dramatically going down as it goes on land over southern New England. So those cooler waters only into the 60s and 70s, which is still actually above normal for those areas, uh, but it's not warm enough to sustain a category one hurricane. So it may sustain it for, let's say, 12 hours, then it's going to weaken down back into a tropical storm. If we look at the chances or the peak storm surge from this, 
you can see that starting off from west to east we have one to three foot storm surge uh, all along the coast of new jersey so that's fairly minor uh, coastal flooding but still something you want to pay attention to then we go over to long island and you're dealing with two to four foot storm surge over this entire region uh even into long island sound so even if you're in coastal connecticut you might still be dealing with uh some of that uh, some of the storm surge from the storm this storm will be uh, moving right uh, uh right here it will be right around this area and as it's going through there, the winds are going to be coming onshore like this. Uh, and then eventually on the northwest side, they'll come in like this. So the, the track of the storm is going to have a huge impact. If it's coming on land over here and the winds are crashing into Connecticut like this and then coming out uh, over Long Island on the northwest side, you're going to have strong winds uh, over northern Long Island into eastern Connecticut. Uh, and then on the southern part of Long Island, uh, the southern and coastal part of Long Island, you're not going to have too much to deal with in terms of storm surge. If we see something uh, that's a little bit further to the west where you're going uh, like this, you're going to have most of that storm surge into Cape Cod, and then it'll come out the other side where we're going to see uh, some of that storm surge also uh, into parts of Long Island Sound. So there is a big discrepancy in even a few miles shift uh, here and there on what could happen with this event. Then as you're getting through the coastal waters of Long I of Rhode Island and into uh, parts of southeastern uh, Massachusetts, that's where we're dealing with a 3 to 5 foot storm surge uh, in those areas. And that's where I think it's going to be on the peak because in most model tracks we have the storm somewhere here and then we have the uh, winds uh, and the waves crashing in this way uh, due to the spin of the storm. So the, in most models, the peak storm surge is going to be right within that area. Looking at the total rainfall out of this event, according to the Weather Prediction Center, we're looking at 1 to 2 inches in that light green. So that's not too much. Definitely nothing uh, too concerning in terms of flooding. Uh, by the way, this is going through Wednesday of this upcoming week. And then we have two to four inches of rainfall in that dark green, uh, which covers a good portion of southern New England and eastern Long Island. And then we have four to six inches of rainfall, uh, which is up for a little bit of southeastern Massachusetts. I would not be surprised if this little band uh, were to move west or east over the next couple of days that storm path is going to be really really uh, influential into that wherever that small band of flooding is going to be there is some models uh, such as the gfs model which brings that streak of heavy rainfall right over long uh, right, right over rhode island and into eastern massachusetts we have of course other models that bring it over southeastern massachusetts we have others which bring it into connecticut so there's one band of rainfall that should produce four plus inches of rainfall and we don't know exactly where that's going to be. The rest of the area is expecting general two to four inches of rain. Looking at the chances of flash flooding, and this would be for uh, this would be for Sunday. You can see that we have a 10% slight risk uh, within much of southern New England and uh, into central and eastern Long Island. So flash flooding is definitely a uh, issue, especially if you live over the coastal areas of New England, especially where we could be dealing with storm surge added on to rainfall from this event. Looking at the aircraft recon from this storm, uh, this is the one from last night. So last night is the one that's kind of darker because, of course, it was going over through nighttime. Uh, and you can see that we had uh, we had winds gusting up to hurricane force within this big patch. They went over that same area and it has weakened, uh, although we are expecting to strengthen again. They're going to be passing probably throughout the storm again. I'm expecting a, a path somewhat uh, like this from this storm, uh, from this uh, aircraft. So you can see that we have within a storm uh, winds gusting up near 50 to, uh, 55 to 60 knots which is a high-end tropical storm uh, earlier uh, last night we were dealing with winds that were gusting up to category 2 uh, level in the upper air and then category 1 level uh, at the surface so uh, they haven't up uh, they haven't updated it just yet because they haven't uh, they haven't found anything just yet, but I think probably if they were to go through again uh, later as the storm is intensifying, they would probably find stronger winds um, probably within the next 12 hours because this is expected to be strengthening quite rapidly, especially as it moves offshore of North Carolina. Within this zone right here is where it's going to mainly develop, and that's where it's going to rapidly strengthen, uh, and then it's going to kind of just hold out until it hits uh, parts of New England. Taking a look at the upper air setup, you can see that we have a 
big trough uh, into the east. Uh, this area of low pressure, which is right here, is going to help to steer the storm. We have tropical, ex-tropical storm Fred, uh, which is up here as well. And then we have a bigger area of high pressure, which is going uh, right over the storm uh, like this. So this is going to help the storm, uh, this storm right here, this is going to help steer this uh, area further to the uh, west if this low pressure was not here this storm would be going all the way uh, to the uh, to the right it would be going all the way to the east so what we're going to be dealing with is this low pressure uh, kind of keeping this in close uh, and that should help to create this uh, create a path where the storm moves again somewhere between Long Island and Cape Cod uh, and that is going to have a big impact on especially how strong this area of low pressure is right here if this is strong then this could uh, help to maneuver the storm a little bit further to the west if this is a little bit weaker uh, then we're going to be seeing this probably uh, going just south of Cape Cod maybe even missing Cape Cod if this is a really weak uh, low pressure so again we're going to have to continue to track this there are many moving parts in the upper air uh, we have a trough up uh, into the northern plain so that is creating a little bit of confusion we have high pressure uh, to the north we have another trough which is digging in over the eastern United States. So there's a lot of moving parts here and the models are not handling it well. That's why uh, just a couple days ago we saw that big uh, outrage from all the models where they were kind of all over the place. We had a model track, we had model track guidance that was 150 miles apart in terms of some of the tracks. Uh, so now we're definitely narrowing it down within about 60 miles, uh, 30 to 60 model miles, but again there is still discrepancy within some of these models taking a look at some of the models here uh, and their individual wind paths uh, so i'm going to mark them out so here is uh, from from the ones that are uh, the ones that are most reliable, the European model, Canadian model, GFS, Icon model. I'm just going to plot them out here so you can see where uh, they're forecasting the strongest winds. Uh, so you can see that starting off with uh, the European model, they're expecting the strongest winds uh, in the landfall area to be right within here. So they have that storm being south of Cape Cod. If we look at the next model here, which is the GFS model, you can see that the GFS has it a little bit further to the west. If we look at the uh, NAM model, you can see the NAM, don't really look at how strong it is. The NAM was overdoing it. The NAM 3KM model last night had a Category 4 or 5 hurricane uh, moving into Long Island. I don't think that's going to happen. But looking at the track of it, uh, which is something that we can take away, uh, you can see that in, it would have landfall probably somewhere over eastern Long Island. If we were to look at the next model, which would be the Icon, you can see that it has a storm uh, pretty much just south of the NAM, but not as strong. Uh, if we look at the RGEM model, the Canadian model, you can see that we have uh, it right near the Icon and the NAM model, but again, not as strong strong is what the NAM was doing. I, I don't think the NAM is anywhere close to correct. It usually is overdoing most of these hurricanes. So I would not take any of its winds for uh, for uh, any any purpose. I really don't think the NAM's wind field is accurate at all. And I don't really think it serves any purpose. I've seen a lot of people circulating that map saying we're going to have a Category 4 hurricane moving into southern New England. But again, it's very unlikely. And just one model run, even though it has happened over the past two or three model runs, it's one model, it's the NAM model, which we know usually overdoes things, including winter storms. It overdoes hurricanes as well. Uh, so, again, I'm going to take, I really don't think the NAM is too useful in this scenario, except for the track of it. So, you can see that we have two different, really, outcomes. It, it looks like most models either want to bring this into eastern Long Island, or they're going to take the more easterly uh, route, and they're going to push this up near Cape Cod or southern Rhode Island. Uh, so, again, that's a span of about 30 uh, miles, 60 miles right around there so it is still a fairly big gap but at least it is narrowing down i would expect that we're going to start to see this uh, move a little bit closer to the middle uh, and we're going to start to see that some of the models agree a little bit more Here's a little bit of a cool chart that I found. This is not related to uh, Tropical Storm Henri, but uh, just something cool that I found from the uh, National Weather Service Eastern Regions. Uh, and this is this is the, the National Weather Service, which covers the entire eastern block of the United States. And then, of course, you have the individual ones for individual cities. But uh, that, they posted uh, this graphic, which shows all the uh, tornadoes that were surveyed from Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, you can see that we had quite a few EF1 tornadoes and a few EF0 tornadoes um, some of them did actually live uh, for quite a few miles uh, they some of them including these up here 
were up near five to six miles in duration, which is actually quite uh, quite a decent uh, length for some of these storms. Most of them did happen uh, did happen over northern Georgia, western South Carolina, southwestern North Carolina, as you can see. Uh, but we did see a few in some outlier areas like Pennsylvania. We saw one uh, in New Jersey and another one in Pennsylvania. So most of them were uh, into parts of the southern Appalachians. But again, we did see some uh, over parts of the northeast. So just something that I found a little bit interesting. If you want, you can screenshot that and just save that in your phone. Uh, I found it a little bit interesting, so I just want to share share that with you guys. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.